the bond that exists between a Zanpakuto and their Shinigami wielder forms a significant aspect of the narrative of Bleach. An individual's abilities, growth in strength, and even their repertoire of techniques are all intricately linked into this complex bond. It's a fascinating element that's been incorporated into Bleach's story, and incidentally, it results in every Shinigami having a very unique and distinctive relationship with their respective Zanpakuto. Each of these relationships come with their own individual challenges that require the Shinigami army to find their own path towards overcoming them. Some of these bonds manifest in different ways. There are situations like Ichigo and his Zanpakuto Zangetsu, where his relationship with the beings that reside within his inner world was plagued by his inability to comprehend or even recognize their true intentions. This lack of understanding had led to him misconstruing Oman Zangetsu and outright rejecting his inner hollow. This dysfunctional bond that had resulted had influenced Ichigo's powers throughout the narrative until he was eventually able to reconstruct reconcile all of the differences between himself and the sources of his power. Now on the other hand, you have relationships like Shuhei Hisagi and his Zanpakuto Kazashini, which takes a very similar path to Ichigo's. That entire conflict is based upon a miscommunication between the two of them on exactly what Hisagi needs to do in order to become an ideal Shinigami. This conflict is resolved after a deep introspective conversation between Hisagi and his Zanpakuto where he is finally able to understand Kazashini. Now amongst all of the Zanpakuto relationships, there is one that stands out as the most peculiar and intriguing interpretation of this Zanpakuto Shinigami bond that we've encountered. This particular bond that I'm referring to involves the only Shinigami in history who can be classified as having known his Zanpakuto while at the same time not really having known it. I'm of course talking about the relationship between Kimpachi Zaraki and his real Zanpakuto spirit Yachiru Kusajishi, or as she is later known as Nozarashi. By the end of this video, you're going to know everything that there is to know about Kimpachi Zanpakuto. We'll be talking about all of the foreshadowing that Kubo had laid in front of us, which had culminated during the Thousand Year Blood War arc during the reveal of Kimpachi's true powers. Be sure to stick around until the end of this video where I'll be explaining how Kimpachi was able to activate his very own Bankai as well as his Shikai. Before the video begins, only 12% of the people who watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. The shocking plot reveal that Yachiru is in fact Kimpachi Zanpakuto Nozarashi had seemed to have rubbed a lot of readers the wrong way. Some of this discontent might have stemmed from the fact that Bleach was in a somewhat turbulent phase in its narrative due to its accelerated pace during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, with many plot points having been left unanswered by the end of the arc. And in all honesty, I can get behind some of the criticism that the final portions of the Thousand Year Blood War arc gets. However, criticizing the rushed and poorly paced final act of the Thousand Year Blood War arc is one thing, but claiming that the Nozarashi reveal was badly handled is another. Therefore, my intent with this video is to delve into the relationship between Kimpachi and Nozarashi and look at some of the brilliant foreshadowing that Kubo employs that had led up to this plot development. Thanks to Kubo's official fan club, he has in fact given us some answers in regards to Kimpachi Zanpakuto and I think that it's important that we start by getting his stance on this whole matter before we delve into the events of the Bleach narrative. On Kubo's fan club Club Outside, a question was posed to him from a fan who had inquired about the true nature of Yachiru and Nozarashi. Kubo had provided us with an answer while at the same time making some interesting additions about Nozarashi that we didn't get to see within the manga. The fan states that they have a question regarding Yachiru Kusajishi. While she is Zaraki Kimpachi Pachi Zanpakuto Nozarashi is her being called Yachiru the reason why she herself also possesses the Zanpakuto Sampo Kenju. Be it Hihio Zabimaru or Fuji Kujaku, there have been many scenes in which the Zanpakuto could not release their true power unless called out by their true names. The fan states that they've been thinking that Nozarashi had gained the essence of a Shinigami and had taken form due to being named after the real Yachiru. Now this name which had led to her obtaining the Sampo Kenju sword which is revealed to be specialized in the act of slashing. The fan asks Kubo that they are really curious about the identity of Yachiru Kusajishi, so it would be great if he could answer his question. This is a multifaceted question that many fans have had in their minds for years after the end of Bleach's story. The question goes over multiple story beats and the fan manages to draw a number of similarities between what the story had previously established and thus had somewhat created a logical, coherent answer to his own question. But if anything, he wants Kubo to clarify if he is on the right track. And the fact that 
fans are able to look at Kubo's previously established story elements in order to answer unanswered plot points goes to show just how rich and detailed the narrative of Bleach is, and it's a testament to Kubo as a writer. Kubo responds to the fan in complete surprise, as he states that despite there not having been a single passage written within Bleach about Yachiru being Nozarashi, he's still amazed that the fan was able to figure all of this out. And of course, in true Kubo troll fashion, he opens with a playful jab in the way only he can, but nonetheless, his answer here is an extremely important part of explaining Kimpachi Zanpakuto, and it's the foundation that I've based this video on. Kubo confirms that everything that the fan has stated within his question is correct, and in addition, Yachiru represents a form of Kimpachi's Bankai that was separated from its main body, and incidentally, it's gained the power of a Shinigami upon receiving a name from Kimpachi. The true embodiment of Nozarashi is that of a grown woman, and Kubo even gives us an analogy to better understand this, as he compares the young Yachiru which was Kimpachi's lieutenant to Tensal Zangetsu, and we know that these two forms originate from Kimpachi's Bankai and Ichigo's Bankai respectively, and the grown woman Nozarashi which is the embodiment of Kimpachi Zanpakuto to be similar to Zangetsu, so the Zanpakuto spirit that appears in its sealed Oshikai state. Via this question and answer, Kubo validates the fan theories and he adds onto their analysis some crucial details that they may have missed, and I remember being completely unsurprised by this answer when I'd first read it, because to me it had aligned perfectly with Bleach's law. However, some fans were still dissatisfied with this explanation, with a few fans even alleging that Kubo had hastily put together this response. Upon closer examination though, this claim is unfounded, therefore I want to spend the rest of this video dissecting each aspect of Kubo's explanation here, and to explain just how and why it works, using corresponding examples from the Bleach story, and where better to begin than with Kimpachi's early appearance within the story. We were first introduced to Kimpachi Zaraki in chapter 65, and his lieutenant Yachiru Kusajishi in chapter 83. No one would have guessed this incredibly shocking truth of their relationship this early on. After all, they were essentially father and daughter at this point in the story. They had met each other after Kimpachi had engaged in one of his usual slaughter fests in Rukongai. He was then approached by a nameless infant who had seemingly appeared out of nowhere, and knowing that she would certainly die if he had left her there, he had decided to adopt her and raise her by himself. Now this is a detail that I feel that many readers gloss over, but it really does stand out to me, especially after the shocking reveal made within chapter 669. There's the rather explicit foreshadowing of her real nature where she touches his Zanpakuto in response to being asked about her origins, but I think that we can interpret this scene from another angle. Nozarashi, Kimpachi Zanpakuto, had been seeking a way to connect with him for a very long time, so she had manifested a physical aspect of herself in order to become his companion. However, instead of showing her full adult form, she had chosen her Bankai's appearance as her avatar. It's intriguing how Nozarashi had decided to present herself as an infant to Kimpachi, almost as if it had known that Zaraki would not abandon a child in the wilderness. This cleverly sets up Kimpachi's character, who despite his violent tendencies, is a surprisingly compassionate captain, and this really does explain why his squad members are so loyal to him. The origins of Yachiru align perfectly with the previously established Bleach narrative. The story has shown that exceedingly powerful souls can split themselves into different entities if it is needed. There are two instances of this phenomenon, and each of them creates and meets criteria that I'll define a bit later on. Now, the first was the peculiar incident of Stark and Lilinette, who had split from their original singular form into their current separate selves as a response to their intense loneliness, which had stemmed from their inability to gain allies. Because they had that much power that they had ended up killing anyone that had come into contact with them. Now, this second occurrence takes place within the Spirits of Forever With You light novels, and Xylopodo, who at the time was the zero ranking Esparta, had split off a part of himself in order to create his brother Yilfit Granz. He had done this in order to shed his violent tendencies, which he had felt were hindering his scientific potential. Now, this separation, however, greatly diminished his power and it had resulted in him losing his Esparta ranking. In these examples of the soul splitting into different entities, two significant criteria can be discerned. Firstly, all the souls capable of this must be extremely powerful. Stark being the Primera Espada and Xylopodo the Zero Ranking Espada certainly meet this criteria. Lastly, Yachiru had ended up being split from the Zanpakuto spirit of Kimpachi Zaraki, a being who was even more powerful than both Stark or Xylopodo at their peak. Secondly, souls performed this act out of a specific necessity. Stark had done it out of loneliness, Xylopodo had done it in order to devote himself to science, and we can assume that Nozarashi had appeared in order to connect with Kimpachi, who had 
Bird ended up isolating himself from her. So incidentally, this development aligns perfectly with our understanding of souls being able to split into different entities without causing any inconsistencies or plot holes within the narrative. Now moving on to the topic of how Yachiru's name had granted her powers. It's actually a lot easier to explain than souls splitting themselves up into different entities. For some reason, this aspect of Kubo's explanation seems to spark a lot of debate within the fandom. Therefore, I hope to dispel any misconceptions about it in this next segment. Kimbachi had decided to name the orphan Yachiru, and this is explained by Kubo to be precisely what grants Yachiru Shinigami powers. Now, this makes perfect sense when you realize that names are a core component of Bleach's universe. They're defined as the bonds that tether beings and even concepts to existence. They inscribe identities onto the beings who possess them, and can inversely result in an individual losing their identities if they were to lose their name. The construct of names is a system that Ichibe Hyosube's power allows him to absolutely abuse. So a person gaining abilities from being given a name, especially when it didn't possess one to begin with, is very consistent with the established world building of Bleach. While Kubo's explanation fits seamlessly, one might argue that it would be relatively easy for an author to retroactively fit a narrative into his world's established law. So to challenge this criticism, let's explore how the broader narrative supports Kubo's answer. Firstly, in chapter 114, Yachiru explicitly states that she had neither a name nor parents. She adds that she vividly remembers all of the events of that day, even the number of clouds in the sky. This implies that Yachiru was old enough to remember such specifics, but inexplicably couldn't remember her name. Now, this is a very peculiar detail. It suggests that Yachiru may never have had a name to begin with. In the very same chapter, Kimpachi contemplates the pain that his Zanpakuto might experience from no one knowing its name. In retrospect, these statements appear strikingly explicit and seem to indirectly answer why Nozarashi had created Yachiru. After all, what's the point of a name if no one knows it? And due to the pain of not having a name, Nozarashi had created a version of itself that Kimpachi could know by a name of his choosing. It's remarkable how these early story elements interconnect so seamlessly with later plot reveals. However, I believe that the most compelling evidence of this concept being Kubo's original intention lies in how Kimpachi achieves Bankai. This moment is ironically recognized by many as an ass pull that had come out of nowhere, but this couldn't be further from the truth. In order to understand this, we must consider the prerequisites to attaining Bankai. As clearly defined within chapter 120, one must learn to externalize the Zanpakuto spirit in the outside world. Thus, when Yachiru had returned to her true position as Nozarashi, Kimpachi could instantly gain Bankai because he had been externalizing his Zanpakuto for years at this point. This suggests that Kimpachi, among all Shinigami, could be credited with the fastest Bankai attainment post attaining Shikai. You could even infer that the moment that Kimpachi had learned to use Nozarashi's power, he instantly had the ability to utilize Bankai due to Yachiru's long existence outside of its blade form, thus explaining how Kimpachi was effortlessly able to attain Bankai. Now, after reflecting upon all of this, it really cements the fact that Bleach is a story that readers derive the most meaning from upon revisiting the story and having a second look at the intricate details that Kubo has woven into the story. Despite the struggles that Kubo had in writing the final portion of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, I am convinced that he had not lost sight of the major payoffs that he had planned from way back at the start of the series. All of the foreshadowing that he had placed within the story did indeed have their payoffs, and in my opinion, the final result of Yachiru and Kimpachi's relationship was a product of meticulous planning that had been thought of long before the events of the final arc of Bleach. So we're at the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you think about the true nature of Kimpachi Zanpakuto and his relationship with his former Lieutenant Yachiru, who was later revealed to be the Bankai form of his Zanpakuto spirit called Nozarashi? Do you agree with my analysis and my interpretation of Kubo's answer, or do you disagree with me? I'd love to know all of your thoughts in the comments, so definitely continue the discussion. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach Explained video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.